Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. May I now call upon the final speaker from the government side, Ms. Amy Shields. Honorable, honorable, Mr. Chairman, lovely bell girl, Madame le Ministre, your excellencies, Monsieur le Directeur Général, Madame la Directrice, judicious members of the jury, horsemates of the government, living members of the opposition, for now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're sitting down or standing up, a very good evening to all of you. Now, the horsemen of the apocalypse, ladies and gentlemen, they're not here to scare you tonight. They're not here to devour you. And believe it or not, they're not even here to make you laugh. No, haha. -ha. <laughs> they have, in fact, been summoned by the passion of man to warn you of the threats that they have seen passion inflict upon society, to warn you of the woes of war, ladies and gentlemen, the fears of famine and the great gravity of depravity. Yeah. Now, I am the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, and some might say the scariest of them all, death, ladies and gentlemen. But don't be afraid, don't be afraid. I have not come for you. I have merely come tonight to show you exactly how my fellow horsemen of the government have killed each of the arguments of the unmindful opposition. I will begin with the idea of passion, ladies and gentlemen. Gabor gave us a true definition of passion, an emotion taken to such an extreme extent that we may lose control over it. And then Georgios came in, and how did he define the motion? He said that passion is a positive emotion. Now, George, liking something is a positive emotion. Then he said that passion without an object attached to it is benign. But George, if you're not passionate about anything, then you're just not passionate at all. <laughs> The government, the, op the opposition's main. Yes, I'll take Doesn't you. Doesn't that imply that the problem lies on the object, not the passion? Yeah. Yeah. The object, George, may be the consequence, but the passion, we agree with you here, is the tool. They keep saying the, the opposition's main defense, ladies and gentlemen. The opposition's main defense is that passion is the tool in the crime here. Yes, that may be so. And a nuclear bomb, you know, is a tool in killing a lot of people. That does not make it not a threat, ladies and gentlemen. The motion is that passion is a threat to society. And what the opposition forgot to define the until the fourth please, speaker, madam. no thank you, is the word society. And this is where everything went downhill. Point of information, madam. No, thank you. But the next three speakers, ladies and gentlemen, seem to confuse passion when they spoke like this for inflection on words. <laughs> Edward told us that passion is love, but as Matthias rode in and showed us, passion is not just love. Passion is an emotion taken to the uncontrollable extreme, and in love, it can cause depravity. Yes, I'll take you. You can kill someone with a shoe. Does it mean that shoes are a threat to society? But what leads you to use the shoe as a weapon is probably your passionate anger. And murder is a threat to society, ladies and gentlemen. No, passionate love is a dangerous thing that can lead to jealousy, to depravity, and to war. As Matthias showed us, Helen of Troyes was the face that launched a thousand ships, ladies and gentlemen. No, thank you. But it also destroyed a thousand lives. Point of information. No, thank you. Edward then told us that a hobby can be a passion. And then he said a hobby is just a silly activity. How can it be a threat? But Edward, if it is a silly activity, how can it be a passion? That is not what passion means. The opposition, the opposition have confused the word passion with the word interest, ladies and gentlemen. 
Then Thibaut. Thibaut came and told her the threat to a dictatorship is an evolution. But as you said yourself, it was a threat. It was a threat to the society that was existing at the time. Because as Gabor stated, society is a group of people living together in a certain way. Once passion comes in, that certain way changes. That is why it is a threat. No, thank you. <laughs> the opposition then said that a passion for art could never be a threat to society. Well, we disagree, ladies and gentlemen, because if an artist was truly passionate to the point of an almost uncontrollable extreme, he would paint wherever he wanted to. He might paint over the security notices in the metro, leading little children to get their fingers stuck in the door, ladies and gentlemen. This is a threat to society. And finally, Adrian described a society to us where Big Brother recognized how passion was indeed a threat to the society that was set up. Don't get us wrong. We're not saying Big Brother's regime was good, but you cannot deny that passion was a threat to the society of 1984 in George Orwell's novel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Daria showed you how conflict and war is caused by humans taking anger to the extreme. Matthias showed you how depravity is caused by taking lust to the extreme. Francesco smells out famine all over the world and showed us how the all-encompassing, overwhelming need to devour that passionate greed inspires in the human race is a detriment to society. And ladies and gentlemen, it comes as no surprise, and indeed, no surprise at all, that the horsemen of the, the apocalypse but also the members of the opposition are lawyers tonight because gathered here in the lobby of legislation, we see proof that society fears the threat of passion because we create the law to stop people from taking any emotion to a passionate, uncontrollable extreme. And as Aristotle said, as Aristotle said, members of the opposition, the law is reason free from passion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as my horsemates have shown you, passion rocks the boat, putting it in danger of capsizing. Recognize the reason of our message. Heed the warning of the horsemen and pass this motion. Thank you.